Well, Shabbat Shalom. If we all take our seats. First time in a couple of months. It's good to be back. Amen. All right, this week's parsha uh, is a special readings for Shavuot. Comes from Deuteronomy chapter 14 through 16. And in this Torah, shot, this Torah portion, we read about the tithing principles that God commanded. For God said, you shall truly tithe all the increase of your grain that the field produces year by year. You shall eat, therefore, with the Lord in the place he chooses to make his name abide. The tithe of your grain and the new wine, your oil, the firstborn of your herds and your flocks, that you may learn to fear the Lord your God always. We also to review the instructions of giving to the poor, giving of the bond servant, and the instructions concerning the firstborn of animals. Also in the section of Torah, read the review of uh, the Passover for Moses says, You shall eat no leavened bread, or seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, and the bread of affliction shall be with you. We are instructed not to eat the Passover where we were to gather only in the place the Lord chooses to abide. We also in this section are the next two feasts, the feasts of Shavuot and the feast of Sukkot. For it says, you shall rejoice before the Lord your God, you and your son and your daughter, your male servant and your female servant, the Levite who is within your gates, the stranger and the fatherless, and the widow who are among you, at the place where the Lord your God chooses to make his name abide. And you shall remember that you are a slave in Egypt. You shall be careful to observe these statutes. Of these three feasts, we are instructed that the men of God are, to, are not to appear empty-handed at these feasts, that we are to bring an offering according to what we are able to bring. Every man shall give as he is able according to the blessing of the Lord your God, which he has given to you. The Haftor portion comes from Ezekiel 1, and the Haftor portion speaks of Shavuot and describes Ezekiel's vision of the chariot, reminiscent of the revelation experienced by the Jewish people at Mount Sinai on the very first Shavuot. The prophet Ezekiel relays the vision he had of a chariot led by four creatures that resemble men and described, describes their physical appearance and actions in detail. When they, the living beings, would go, they, the wheels, would go. And when they would stand, the wheels would stand. And when they would lift themselves up from the ground, the wheels would lift themselves with them. For the will of the living being was in the wheels. Like the appearance of the rainbow that is in the cloud on a rainy day, so was the appearance of the brightness around about. That was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And when I saw, I fell on my face, and I heard a voice speaking, and then the Haftor portion ends with Ezekiel's mentioning of the prayers of the angels of God. And the Brichat Shah portion comes from Acts chapter 2. And when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent mighty wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Then Peter stood up with the eleven and raised his voice and addressed the crowd, fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. Peter then goes on and explains the story of the Mashiach and how it relates to the Jewish people and the Torah. And those who accepted his message were baptized. About 3,000 were added to the number that day. Amen. Shofarim. praised. Worthy Lord. A couple 
couple months ago, Lord, you told us to go into our houses and stay a while until you called us back out. This morning you say, rise up, rise up, and go to the house of God and worship. We're here, Lord. We're here. We praise you, Lord. We give you glory and honor this morning. You adorn us, Lord God, with your word, with your ordinances, and with your laws. You fill us up, Lord, with joy, even in the midst of trial. And Lord, we want to take this time this morning, Lord, and just give you honor and give you praise because you deserve all glory. Lord, you've shown us many things during this time, Lord, as we've had to separate from one another, Lord. You're revealing, Lord, that you are separating the the wheat from the chaff, Lord, and we see it with our eyes in this world. It's evident, Lord, that the world needs you. And this Shavuot, Lord God, let it be a time of marking, Lord God, a beginning, Lord, as your glory can be poured out upon this world, Father, that needs you so desperately, that is so evil and wicked, Lord. We see it all around us, Lord God. But your glory will be revealed. Your glory will be revealed, Father. Thank you, Father, for the core of this group, Lord God, the people of this place. You've even made it evident, Lord God, who that is, Lord, in this place. Who've stuck together and showed love one to another. We love you so much. We thank you, Lord God, that we can be here this morning once again. You've kept us all healthy and well. We give you honor. We give you praise. We've had births, Father, in this place, new babies being born. We give you praise. Father, today, Lord God, as the word comes forth, let it be like myrrh to your nostrils, Lord God, a sacrifice of praise to you, Lord, as we sing, as we hear, Father, you speaking to our hearts and our minds. Let us put away everything, Lord God, that would cause doubt. Let us cast it off, Lord. Father, because you alone are our healer, you are our provider, you are our substance. We give you praise, Father, because you justify us through your son, Yeshua HaMashiach, and we are sanctified through you, Lord. We are separated unto you, Lord, and we praise you, Father. We ask for your anointing to fall in this place. We thank you that you are going to pour out your spirit upon this world, just like on the day of Pentecost, Lord God. We thank you that your glory will be revealed, Lord God, and that you are going to cause us, Lord God, to draw near to you always, Father. And we know, Father, that it is more important now than ever that we pray and we read our word and we seek your face. And we thank you that you are showing us, Father, what we need to do. Bless the people today, Father. Bless them abundantly, Father. All those, Father, that are not with us, Lord, I pray that you keep them safe. And I thank you, Father, for this day in Yeshua's name as you anoint our rabbi, Father, to bring forth the word today. Amen. stand together in today's worship for how lovely the tents of Jacob and the dwelling places of Israel Israel 
Therefore, with joy, we shall draw water from the wells of Yeshua. Amen. Amen. May be seated. All right. Shabbat shalom. All right. Let's start the Siddur with the Baruch Hu. Baruch Hu et Adonai Hamvarach. Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Le'olam Vayed. Bless the Lord, the Blessed One. Blessed is the Lord, the Blessed One, for all eternity. The children of Israel shall keep the Shabbat, observing it throughout their generations as an everlasting covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Shabbat to another, all flesh shall come to worship before me, says the Lord. Blessing the Shia Yeshua together. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher natan lanu et derech ha-Yeshua b'mashiach Yeshua. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us the way of salvation, Messiah Yeshua. Amen. We all stand for the Shema. <clears throat> Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echa Baruch Shem God, the Lord is one. Blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever. Amen. They have to eat Adonai Lohecha, but call the Vavku of Konafshakov Kumadakam. Vahayu had for him her Ele, a share Anukim at Safkahayom, Al of Avakam. Vashina Tanlan of Akav de Bartabam, Vishivtaka Bevetaka, Uvlatka Vaderak, Ushapka Ukumeka, Uksha Tamli Ot Ayadeka, Vahele Totovo Bain and Naka, Ukta Tamazot Petaka, Uvisharaka. 
And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be upon your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up. You shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and they shall be as frontless between your eyes. You shall write them upon the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Le'ahavta, le'riacha, komoka. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, and God of our fathers, God of Abraham, God of Yitzchak, and God of Yaakov, the great, mighty, and awesome God, the most high God, bestows grace and creates all, and remembers the kindnesses of the fathers, and brings a redeemer to their children's children for his name's sake with love. O King, helper, savior, and shield, blessed are you, O Lord, shield of Abraham. You are eternally mighty, my Lord, the resurrector of the dead are you, abundantly able to save, who sustains the living with kindness, resurrects the dead with abundant mercy, supports the fallen, heals the sick, releases the confined, and maintains his faith to those asleep in the dust. Who is like you, O master of mighty deeds, and who is comparable to you, O king, who causes death and restores life and makes salvation sprout? Our God and God of our fathers, may be pleased with our rest. Sanctify us in your commandments and grant us our portion in your Torah. Satisfy us from your goodness and make us rejoice in your salvation. And purify our hearts to serve you in truth, in love and favor. O Lord our God, grant us your holy Shabbat as a heritage of Israel, who sanctifies your name, rest therein. Baruch atah Adonai, Mekadesh HaShabbat. Blessed are you, O Lord, who makes the Shabbat holy. Magnified and sanctified be his great name in the world which he has created according to his will. May he establish his kingdom during your life and during your days and during the life of the whole house of Israel, even swiftly and soon, and all say, Amen. Let his great name be blessed forever and to all eternity. Blessed, praised, and glorified, exalted, extolled, and honored, magnified and lauded be the name of the Holy One. Blessed is he, though he be high above all blessings and songs, praises and consolations which are uttered in the world, and all say, Amen. May you make peace in his high places, make peace upon us, on all Israel and say Amen. Yit Gadol Vet Kadashi Merabam, Bermad Vir Kurti, Vyamik Makote, Bukaikon of Yomokon of Kai to call Bet Israel, Bagalavisman, Karivim Ru. Yesh Merabam, Mevrak, Lealam, or May, or Maya. Yit Barak, Vishtapak, Vitpaar Vimamam, Vina Save at the Darv at the Lave at Halal, Shmerkur Shabri Hum, Lialmin Kobrakata, Vishrat the Tushpekata, Venekamata Damiram, Bama Vimru. Amen. Shalom Vimrama, who ya say Shalom Ali. Shalom, ya say 
sun will rise, you'll come to a certain as your ruling doors. Surely as the sun will rise, you'll come to a certain as your ruling doors. You'll come, let your glory fall as you respond.
Yeshua HaMashiach, Melech HaMelechim, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Be in this place, in our hearts, in our minds, in our eyes that may be opened, our ears may hear. All that you have for your people today, Lord, thank you, Lord, that we are gathered again, assembled again as a holy convocation, as you have called, as you have commanded, that we together assemble on this day to worship you, to bring you honor, to bring you praise. And bless your name. Be in the word. In Yeshua's name. Amen. Vahi ben Zoah ha'aron. When the ark would travel, Moshe would say, Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered, and let them that hate you flee from you. For out of Zion shall go forth the Torah, and the word of the Lord from Yerushalayim. Blessed be he who in his holiness gave the Torah to his people, Yisrael. Ya'amon, Yoel, ben Avraham la Torah. Baruchu et Adonai Amvorach. Baruch Adonai Hamvorak Leolam Vaed. Baruch Atadonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Asher Bakha Banu Mikol. Ha'amin V'natan Lanu Etrato. Baruch Atadonai Notein HaTorah. Bless the Lord, the Blessed One. Blessed is the Lord, the Blessed One for all eternity. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the Universe, who has chosen us from all peoples and given us His Torah. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Yiladim? Well, what do we say? Boker Tov, Yaladim. Let us pray. We thank you, O Lord, for these blessed children. We thank you, O Lord, that you've kept them safe and protected from this virus and plague that's been around about us, O Lord. I ask for a hedge of protection around each and every one of them, O Lord, that you would keep them healthy, you keep them safe, keep them away from harm's way. Lord, I also thank you, Lord, that we can come together again as a fellowship, as a community, Lord, to praise and worship you on Shabbat. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for the blessings of these children. And Lord, just ask that you keep your hand upon them as they grow and mature in the faith, that they will realize who you are, Yeshua, when they reach that age of understanding. And you will surround them with godly men and women who will assist them on their life's journey. There's such a blessing to us, O oh Lord, and we thank you for those that are here, and we ask for blessing for those who can't be here today, Lord, and we just ask that you have your hand upon all of our children of Rosh Pinah, for we ask all these things in Yeshua's name. Amen. Aser taser et kol Tavuat Zarach Hayotse Hasade Shana Shana Leakalta Lifne Adonai Elohecha Bamakom Asher Yivkar Lashaken Shmo Shem Maaser Deganka Vitoroshka Vaitz Harecha Yuv Korot Bakercha Vatsonka Lemaan Tilmad Layira et Adonai Eloheka kol hayamim Vaki Yirba Mincha Haderach Ki lo Tukal Setu or Seto Ki Yarkach Mincha Hamakom Asher Yivkar Adonai Eloheka Lesum Shmoshem Ki Yivrecha Adonai Eloheka Thou shalt truly tithe all thy increase of thy seed that the field bringeth forth by year by year, 
And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose to place his name there, the tithe of the corn, of the wine, and of thine oil, and the firstlings of thy herds and of their flocks, that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. And if the way be too long for thee, so that thou art not able to carry it, or if the place be too far from thee, which the Lord thy God choose to set his name there, when the Lord of the God hath blessed thee. Amen. Amen. The blessing after the Torah reading. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher natan lanu Torah imet v'chaye olam natah b'techenu Baruch atah Adonai no tain haTorah. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth and has planted eternal life within us. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. V'zot haTorah. V'zot haTorah sher shem Moshe lifnei b'nei Yisrael al piyadonai b'yad Moshe. And this is the Torah that Moses placed before the children of Israel at the command of the Lord through Moses' hand. John 1.1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This Torah scroll is the Word of God. Yeshua is this Word. John the Immerser said in John 1.29, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. God's Word is written on lambskin. Yeshua is this Lamb. In John 12.32, Yeshua said, And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all peoples to myself. The two wooden poles holding this Torah scroll are called Eitz Chaim, or Tree of Life. Yeshua was sacrificed on two wooden poles some 2,000 years ago for our sins. Amen. Eitz Chaim He, Eitz Chaim He, Lemazakim Ba, Vatonker Mushar, Drakea Darke No Am Vakolna Tivatel Shalom, Hashavenu Adonai Lakav Neshuva Kadesh Menu Kikidem. Is a tree of life to those who take hold of it. And happy are those who support it. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are peace. Cause us to return to you, Adonai, and we shall return. Renew our days as of old. Revelation 2.7 reads, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the congregations. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Yeshua was, is, and shall ever be this word of the one living God that we look upon this day for our salvation. Amen. May be seated. Well, for this week, we're going to have the children in with us, but then next week uh, for the teachers, uh, we'll start uh, with class again starting next week, okay? So we'll give it a test here, see how, we, how everyone does, and then we'll start classes again next week. Is that all good? Uh, we're going to hold off though on Oneg for a little while. We'll just give it a couple weeks and see how that goes, and then we'll, we'll um, weave that in. Um, and. Um, and monitor that, okay? So how many are ready to study the Word this morning? How many are glad to be back? It's refreshing, isn't it? Especially after uh, Shavuot. The title of the message today is Remembering What You Have. Remembering What You Have. Now this Shabbat is the second day of Shabbat. Um, you'll see that 
There's two Shabbats, uh, or this is the, I'm sorry, this, this Shabbat is the second day of Shavuot. Um, there's two Shavuot. There's one that was in the land. There's one outside the land, which is Ashkenazi. Uh, if it's Sephardic, there would be readings uh, for today. Uh, since we follow the Ashkenazi um, um, example, uh, the readings are not for today. Um, so we'll continue with the readings next week. Uh, the readings for this week is around uh, Shavuot. I thought that it makes some sense, uh, as I shared on, on uh, Erev uh, Shavuot, Thursday night. Um, I said I would be talking about Shavuot today, and we're going to talk about it. Um, but I'd like to start out with some uh, facts, some fun facts to remember. Traditionally, we read uh, the four chapters of Ruth uh, today. Um, so I would encourage you that in your, in your study time uh, for today, uh, for Shabbat, that's, that you read the book of Ruth. Shouldn't take you too long. And even if it did take you long, it should not matter that it takes you too long. So, also Ruth and Boaz um, happen to be um, King David's great-grandparents. Um, one of the reasons why they read that. And it's also written that on Shavuot, that was the death of King David. Um, the 50 days of the counting Omer are over as of yesterday. Shavuot is called what else? Anyone know? Pentecost, what else? Feast of, Feast of Weeks, very good. Tov Meod. Shavuot makes the end of the barley harvest and the beginning of the wheat harvest. And there's a lot of, of prophetic uh, uh, renderings around the, the changes in the harvests. Uh, throughout the centuries, uh, there's been controversy as to when Shavuot was to start after the counting of the Omer. And the reason is, is the issue was when to start the counting. And there's a lot of debate back and forth about that. The other thing that's interesting is that in rabbinic times around the second century CE, the Shavuot festival went through a transformation. And that transformation that took place was that it became the anniversary of giving the Torah on Har Sinai based upon Shemot chapter 19 verse 1, which says the following. In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. And it's based upon this verse because it mentions the third month, which is after the first month, which is where Pesach occurs. Okay, so there's a basis for that. Uh, unlike Pesach and Sukkot, Shavuot doesn't have many spe special rituals. It is, however, one of the three special offering feasts, Pesach, or, or uh, unleavened bread, um, a Shavuot, and um, Feast of Tabernacles, uh, Sukkot, as mentioned in Davarim, Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 16, which says the following. Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose, in the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and in the Feast of Weeks, and in the Feast of Tabernacles, and they shall not appear before the Lord empty. And many of you all uh, brought forth your offering on Erev Shavuot. Uh, and we thank you uh, for that. Shavuot feast does have two memorials for us as Messianic Jews, as Messianic believers. One is the giving of the Torah, and the other is the outpouring of the Ruach HaKodesh. Now I think it's interesting that when you look back at church history, when you look at uh, different writings in the fathers and anti-Nicene fathers, and you look at some of the other external writings, that there's, there's a lot of um, things going on in that first and second century. And I think it's interesting that there was this transformation that occurred in rabbinic Judaism as the recognizing of Shavuot of the day of the Torah being given on Har Sinai and the outpouring of the Ruach HaKodesh, which clearly had um, a support around uh, the Messiah that was to come as the suffering servant. So I don't think there's a coincidence that there was a change, um, but, but I wanted to call that out to your attention. So for the rest of this morning, as, as we go through our time together, we're going to go through the various scriptures associated with Shavuot. The feast may be light on rituals, 
but it is definitely not light on scriptural references. So let's listen to the first memorial, then we'll go to the second memorial of the giving of the Torah. Davarim 16, Deuteronomy, verses 10 through 12 says the following. And thou shalt keep the feast of weeks unto the Lord thy God with a tribute of a freewill offering of thine hand, which thou shalt give unto the Lord thy God according as the Lord thy God hath blessed thee. And thou shalt rejoice before the Lord thy God, thou and thy son, and thy daughter, and thy manservant, and thy maidservant, and the Levite that is within thy gates, and the stranger, and the fatherless, and the widow that are among you, in the place which the Lord thy God hath chosen to place his name there. And thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in Egypt, and thou shalt observe and do these statutes. Now this is Moshe speaking, because remember, Moshe... It's Moshe's words in Davarim, Deuteronomy, and it's God's words in Bereshit through um, uh, the first four books of the Torah. Uh, this is Moshe speaking of Shavuot, which was spoken by God in Vayikra Leviticus 23. Now let's read Shemot, Exodus chapter 19, verses 1 through 7, which says this. In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. For they were departed from Rephidim, and were come to the desert of Sinai, and had pitched in the wilderness. And there Israel camped before the mount. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bare you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore... If you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. Now God knew that B'nai Israel, the children of Israel, would have difficulty following these commandments. So he established a way for in the future to allow them to all his instruction to be internalized as referenced in Jeremiah chapter 31, 31 through 33, which says this. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. Although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. Now, uh, it mentions the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Uh, this writing was done after Israel, the ten tribes were, were uh, defeated. Judah was left and then Judah was defeated. So these two sections of of the whole, all the tribes of Israel are being referenced in, in Jeremiah 31. Turn to the book of Hebrews chapter 8 verses 6 through 10 which says this. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I'll be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Etching his word into our inward parts. Which takes us right up to the spiritual mechanism to accomplish the internalization of God's word. And to the second memorial for us on Shavuot, which is the giving of the Ruach HaKodesh. 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 9-10 through 10 says this. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, 
a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. In Luke chapter 24, verse 49, and Acts chapter 1, verses 5, four, chapter 1, verse 4 through 5, and 8 through 11 says the following. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why, standing, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you in heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. So after Yeshua gave up his life, was buried and, and raised from the dead, he spent some 40 days with the Talmudim, uh, was seen by many during those days, and he gave his instructions, uh, opening the scriptures, uh, revealing who he was, that what he had fulfilled. And then after these 40 days, he went back into heaven, and it was about 10 days before uh, Shavuot to start. So he gave instruction for them uh, to tarry for the, that time and get ready for what was coming on Shavuot. Acts 2, 1 through 4, 16 through 22 and 31 through 33 says the following. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Then sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. He seeing this before spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. Therefore, being the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath shed forth this, which ye now see and hear. So we observe these two memorials together, just like God's Word and His Spirit are observed together. 2 Corinthians 3.3 3 says this, For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. Now, last Thursday on Erev Shavuot, we reaffirmed our commitment to God's commands that are to be etched upon our minds and our hearts. Now turn with me to Davarim Deuteronomy chapter 4 verses 9 through 14. Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons, especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb, when the Lord said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. 
And he came near and stood under the mountain, and the mountain burned with fire unto the midst of heaven, with darkness, clouds, and a thick darkness. And the Lord spake unto you out of the midst of the fire. Ye heard the voice of the words, but saw no similitude. Only ye heard a voice. And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform even ten commandments. And he wrote them upon two tables of stone. And the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgments, that you might do them in the land whither ye go over to possess it. Now I'm going to talk with, with you about a, uh, some concepts that are extremely important. You know that the Word of God is like a document that lives inside of you. This is very important. It lives inside of you. It's a living document that you should cherish with your whole being. Because it's so significant even the book of Proverbs makes the following comment in Proverbs 28 verse 9 which says this. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer, shall be an abomination. Isn't that interesting? Those that don't have an interest in God's instruction, even the prayers that come forth from him are abominations to God. Also last Thursday on Erev Shavuot, we also reaffirmed our relationship and commitment to God's Son Yeshua and His Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, that dwells in us, in those who believe uh, and have um, invited Him in, into our inner beings, our hearts, as a result of Yeshua's sacrifice. John 14, 15 through 18 says the following. If ye love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. These, this concept is, is the Word of God and His Spirit are not separate. They, they, are, they are intertwined with each other. Um, many denominations have tried to separate these things. Some say that you don't need the Word of God, you just need the Spirit of God. Others say you don't need the Spirit of God, you just need the Word of God. These are intertwined together. Read the, uh, look at the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 39, 38 and 39 which says this, and I want to draw your attention to then Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 3 to see the parallel. Go ahead. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promises unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Isn't it interesting that he says at this point in time when this event actually occurred, Acts chapter 2, and it's to all that are afar off even as many as the Lord our God shall call. That's prophetically spoken. Does that ring a bell to anyone? Do you remember what was said when we reaffirmed and committed ourselves to the Torah? Remember what it said? Well, Davarim, Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 3 says this. The Lord made not this covenant with our fathers, but with us, even us, who are all of us here alive this day. Everyone, those from the time on Har Sinai, the word of God was given. All of those, even up to today, that word is for us that we are to reaffirm. Just like the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, the receiving of the Holy Spirit, inviting the Holy Spirit into us after we have accepted him as our Mashiach. Inviting him in, allowing it to possess us. I know that's a hard word to sound, but it is to possess us. To be full, to overflowing, that means possession. And it possesses us. And it, is, and it was spoken prof, uh, prophetically just as, as Peter said. That it was spoken prophetically to all of you that are far off. And to all of you as many as the Lord shall call in the future. All of that comes together. These two are intertwined. His instruction, his spirit. Yeshua said, if you love me, Keep my commandments, and he will dwell with us. John 14, 21, and 1 Corinthians 3, 16 through 17 says this. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, 
He it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defileth the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 through 18, says the following. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said. I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, and we have the word of God within us. This is a whole complete package. We are the temple in which this dwells, where we walk throughout this world with these, and we need to realize that that is where we are and what our calling is, and also where, the, where uh, we stand as believers in Yeshua. 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1 says this, Having therefore these promises, dearly, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. So I'm going to, so I'm going to explain something to you here. You notice where it says flesh and spirit, right? The flesh is the mortal body, the corruptible body. The spirit is the, the spirit that, that is incorruptible. Um, that lives on or it re, and, and it lives on and two things will happen. Either we will live life eternally uh, with Yeshua or we will face judgment um, which will uh, result in, in um, eternal torment. Two choices is what happens after uh, relative to our spirit but the body passes on because of Adam's sin. This body is corruptible and it's going to pass on. However, God has given us instruction. He's given us instruction through the Holy Spirit and he's given us instruction through the Word of God. The Word of God was designed to keep the flesh in check. That's what the Word of God was for, to keep it in check. God knew that that would never work. I mentioned it before. It just would not work. And that we needed to have God's word inside of us. And through the interaction of the Ruach HaKodesh, that interaction between the word of God and, and the Ruach HaKodesh and our spirits, all of that allows us to be this temple of God in which he resides with those that belong to him. Now, the Ruach HaKodesh is the seal that God wraps our insides with. The baptism of the Ruach HaKodesh is a staining. Baptizing means to stain. Baptizing in water is a physical manifestation of the way you believe, and it's a water immersion that stains you on the outside. But the baptism of the Ruach HaKodesh is a staining, a baptizing on the inside. And it seals this temple. It seals the world. It seals the spirit that is within inside of us. The Ruach HaKodesh is the seal that God wraps our insides with. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 22 and 20. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 21 and 22 says this. Now he which establisheth us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God who hath also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. And it is the seal that protects the document of his words. Remember, I said the documents, a living document of his words that are to be in our minds and in our hearts. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30 says this. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed until the day of redemption. You understand that concept? You see how all this comes together, the significance of Shavuot? I hope somebody's getting this. In ancient times, seals were used to authenticate the contents of a document. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 16 says this. 
Bind up the testimony. Seal the law among my disciples. Seals were also used as evidence of who the author or who the owners were. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 20 says this. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Also, the seal was to protect from theft. Revelation 3 verses 10 through 13 says this. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, and I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh while I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. So let me summarize this concept of, of what I believe. The seal of the Ruach HaKodesh wraps around the Word of God inside you and illuminates, not eliminate. Doesn't eliminate God's Word. Those churches that teach that all you need is the Holy Spirit. You don't need the Word of God. You don't eliminate the Word of God. The Ruach HaKodesh wraps around the Word of God inside you and illuminates God's words when called upon to instruct us just as the Urim and Thummim did behind the breastplate of the high priest. You get this? You get that? Last Thursday night, we asked for the refreshing. Now begin to accept what God has given you according to your individual spiritual needs. And you do this by remembering your first love when you accepted Yeshua. Ask to be filled with the Ruach HaKodesh and giving thanks with a grateful heart. So, I'll now end today's teaching with Tehillim Psalm verse 67, a national psalm of thanksgiving, a corporate song of thanksgiving, a Rosh Pinah psalm of thanksgiving, expressing gratefulness of the people of God and their confidence in his continued blessings. This is a prayer for the speedy arrival of the Messianic era when all of mankind will follow Israel's lead in worshiping Hashem and thus earn the rewards of his blessings. For the conductor upon Naginos, a psalm, a song, may God favor us and bless us. May he illuminate his continents with us, Selah. To make known your way on earth among all the nations your salvation. Then peoples will acknowledge you, O God. The peoples will acknowledge you, all of them. Nations will be glad and sing for joy because you will judge the people, peoples fairly and guide with fairness the nations on the earth, say law. Then peoples will acknowledge you, O God. The peoples will acknowledge you, all of them. The earth will then have yield its produce. May God, our own God, bless us. May God bless us and may all the ends of the earth fear him. Amen. Amen. It's our duty to praise the master of all, to ascribe greatness to the author of faith the author of creation. For he's made us unlike the nations of the land. He's not placed us like the families of the earth. He's not made our portion like theirs and our lot like their multitudes. And we bend the knee and bow and acknowledge our thanks before the king over kings, the holy one, blessed be he. He stretches out heaven and establishes his earth's foundation and the seat of his glories in the heavens above and the presence of his powers in the most exalted heights. He is our God. There is none other. True is our king. There is nothing beside him as it is written in his Torah. And you know, shall know this day and take to your heart that the Lord he is God in the heavens of love and on the earth below there is none other. Be grateful for God's word. Be grateful that the Ruach Kodesh dwells with inside of you and realize that you are all the temples of the one living God. Amen.
that is within me, Lord. Bless your holy name. I live my life to worship you alone. You brought me out of darkness and into your glorious light. Forever I will sing your great love. Forever I will sing your great love. I love to see you glorified, see you lifted high. I yearn to see all nations bow their knees. Can cause the coldest heart to find a love and everlasting peace. Find a love and everlasting peace. Holy, holy, holy.
myself humbly to you. Here we are, come search our hearts and make them clean. Let not an evil thing be hidden inside us, Lord, but
inside me. Come soon, me, rage through me. Come breathe on the coals of my heart. May your fire start. Breathe, breathe on the coals of my heart. We thank you, Lord, again today, Lord, that we could come gather together once again, that we could come worship you, that we'd set aside this day, this time, these hours, Father, to be in your presence, to hear your word, Father. We ask that you'd continue to move in us, Lord, that you would open our eyes to see all that you have, that your word would strike inside of our hearts and change us, Lord. And we ask, Lord, that you would continue to be with each and every one, protecting us, keeping your guardian angels around about us in front of us behind us beside us and all around us father that you would be there to watch over us and our children and lord god we thank you and praise you that all the things going on in the world that you are in control no matter what and that your kingdom will reign supreme above all evil and we worship you and thank you for that which you are doing the congregation says Maybe see you just for a quick announcements. You really don't have much. Um, if you would like a, a copy of the CD, obviously we're going to be posting it on Facebook and posting it on YouTube, so you could definitely get it there. But if you want a copy of the message today, please see me after service, and I'll make you a copy. Um, also, just reminders that Aqua Box and Bags for ties, offerings, donations. You know, I um, one thing this I, I wanted to announce this because I'm not sure how many of you know this, and to be honest with you, um, I have not. I've never did this until uh, this past couple months. Is when um, is that? I, do all of you know that we have a PayPal account for tithes and offerings? So we have a PayPal account. And uh, honestly, I, I knew we had one, but I never really looked into it or, or thought about doing it for my tithes and offerings for Rosh Pinah. And during the, uh, for whatever reason, during, uh, you know, life changes when you stay at home and you have to think about life, right? So during quarantine, I, I noticed it and, um, you know, I started using it, and honestly, it's pretty easy. And, and what obviously, if you give a, a, a same amount each month, um, you can you can uh, sign it up or schedule it for reoccurring uh, each month, so you don't even have to worry about it. Because I know for me, I don't know about you guys with your bank accounts and everything else. Um, I, I don't have checks. I haven't written a check in forever. Uh, so this has made it much easier for me uh, to go ahead and whether it's Shavuot donation that we, you know, that we had yesterday or whether it's a, a weekly or a monthly um, uh, offering, I just wanted to bring that up to you. You know, God put upon my heart, to be honest with you, to bring it up uh, today because I was thinking about it the last couple of days and I wasn't sure how many of us knew uh, that we had that. So if you, if you, did know, you, now you know, and if you want to use that, you can see me and I can help you through it, but I do think it's a lot easier uh, to utilize as opposed to uh, giving checks uh, in the Zalaka box, okay? Just wanted to bring it up. Obviously, we're not uh, doing Oneg today, so Shavuot Tov. Hope everyone has a great day and great week. See you next week. Yeah.
pas ouvert Ta grâce a bouleversé Le cours de notre humanité Nous crions ensemble Victoire Christ est la lumière Du monde Que sa gloire recouvre la terre Puissance infinie qui libère son nom est saint, il est saint, il est saint. Et Satan met à l'aise.